let's solve problem number 6 on asymptotic notations here is the problem let f and g be functions of natural numbers given by fn equal to n and gn equal to n square which of the following statements is or are true these are all the statements available to us we are required to find which of these statements is or are true. This means it is possible that multiple statements can be true. So now let's try to find out which of these statements is or are true. In the question, we are available with two functions f and g. These are functions defined on natural numbers. This means the inputs they will receive will be natural numbers. And of course, the output they will produce will also be natural numbers. Hence, these two functions are positive functions. Now, can we say f belongs to big O of g? Can we say f belongs to big omega of g? Can we say f belongs to small o of g? Or can we say f belongs to theta of g? We never saw something like this before, isn't so? We don't know what is the meaning of belongs to here. Here we have f belongs to big O of g. It seems like big O of g is some set and f is the element of that set. But we haven't saw something like this before. We know the definition of the big O notation. We saw fn equal to big O of gn. fn equal to big omega of gn fn equal to small o of gn, fn equal to theta of gn. But we haven't saw something like this before. What does these statements mean? In order to solve this problem, we need to decode the meaning of these statements. So we will do this job first and then it would be easier for us to solve this problem. So now let's take one statement at a time and let's try to decode it first. Let's dive into the solution and let's take statement A first. Can we say f belongs to big O of g? We first need to understand the meaning of belongs to here. For this, let's take the definition of the big O notation, which we are already familiar with. We know this is the definition of the big O notation. fn is big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c times gn for some c greater than 0 and for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught. And of course, both c and n naught are constants. Here we can see we have fn equal to big O of gn. We are aware about this form. But we don't know what is the meaning of f belongs to big O of g. This is the simplified definition of the big O notation and this is not the actual definition. The actual definition is a bit different. We use the simplified definition because it helps us in solving the problems easily. But now as the need arises, we need to consider the actual definition too. So now let's try to understand what is the actual definition of the big O notation. Here is the actual definition. Big O of gn is equal to the set of all the functions fn such that there exist positive constants c and n naught such that fn is greater than or equal to 0 and fn is less than or equal to c times gn for all n greater than or equal to n naught. This is the actual definition of the big O notation. Here, big O of gn is represented as the set of all the functions satisfying this condition. According to this condition, fn must be a positive function because fn must be greater than or equal to 0. Also, fn must be less than or equal to c times gn which is same as the definition which we saw earlier, that is the simplified definition. They are also the same condition we saw. fn less than or equal to c times gn. Here also we have the same condition. This is the definition of the big O notation only, but the representation is different. 
Here we are representing big O of Gn as the set of all the functions satisfying this condition. This means big O of Gn must be the set of all the functions which are asymptotically lesser or equal to Gn. How can we relate this definition to the simplified definition? Let's try to understand this. When we say fn is equal to big O of gn, we mean that fn must be either asymptotically lesser or equal to gn. Let's say fn is n square and gn is n cube. Can we say fn is big O of gn? Yes, n square is asymptotically lesser than n cube. Therefore, we can say n square is big O of gn. This means big O of gn is equal to n square. But can we say n square is the only function which is asymptotically lesser than n cube or in other words gn? No, right? We have many functions which are asymptotically lesser or equal to n cube. We have n, n log n, n square log n. We have 1, which is the constant, even 2n cube, 10n cube, 100n cube. All these functions are asymptotically lesser or equal to n cube. So, big O of gn is not a single function. We cannot say that big O of gn is just n square. It is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically lesser or equal to gn. That is why this definition fits well. This definition is conveying the same meaning. And this is the actual definition of the big O notation. We represent big O of gn as the set of functions. It is not just a single function. But the simplified definition helps us understand the big O notation better. And most of the times we need the simplified definition only. But for this question, it is important to understand this actual definition. That's why I brought this into the picture. So now we know the actual definition. We are ready to solve this problem properly. Can we say f belongs to big O of g? First of all, I want to make this clear that if we are saying f belongs to big O of g, it is same as saying fn belongs to big O of gn. Here, input n is not mentioned. That is the only difference. In the question, we are given two functions f and g and they are functions defined on natural numbers. These are the functions fn equal to n and gn equal to n square. So, it is clear that n must be the input to these two functions. And hence, we can assume that n is the input here and fn belongs to big O of gn is the statement. Now, we are ready to find out whether fn, which is equal to n, belongs to big O of gn or not. We know that fn is n and gn is n square. Let's apply the actual definition of the big O notation and let's define big O of gn. We are available with gn, gn is n square. We can easily define big O of gn as well. Big O of gn is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically lesser or equal to gn. This is the big O of gn for gn equal to n square. Here we can observe these are all the functions which belongs to this set and these three dots represent that there are more such functions. I cannot accommodate those functions here. Here we have n within the set. Why? Because n is asymptotically lesser than n square. What about n square? n square is asymptotically equal to n square. Similarly, n power 1.9 belongs to the set because n power 1.9 is asymptotically lesser than n square. Similarly, n log n is asymptotically lesser than n square. That's why n log n belongs to this set. Now, can we say fn, which is n, belongs to this set? Yes, we just saw that n belongs to this set. Hence, we can say fn belongs to big O of gn. 
or in other words if we are going with this statement then we can say f belongs to big o of g and hence statement a is correct but we cannot stop here according to the question it might be possible that there are multiple statements correct so let's move to statement b as well and let's identify whether this statement is correct or not here we have f belongs to big omega of g can we say this statement is correct we know fn is n and gn is n square but how do we write big omega of gn big omega of gn is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically greater or equal to gn in case of big o notation we know big o of gn is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically lesser or equal to gn here also we can use the condition of the big omega notation which we are already familiar with so we can say big omega of gn is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically bigger or equal to gn so big omega of gn is this set here we can see n square belongs to this set because n square is asymptotically equal to gn which is n square n square log n belongs to this set because n square log n is asymptotically bigger than n square and there are many such functions but can we say fn which is equal to n belongs to this set no this time we cannot say because n is asymptotically lesser than n square it is not greater or equal to n square and hence we can say fn which is equal to n does not belongs to big omega of gn therefore f does not belongs to big omega of g and hence this statement is not correct we cannot say that f belongs to big omega of g now let's move to the next statement can we say f belongs to small o of g in case of small o notation fn can only be asymptotically lesser than gn therefore small o of gn is the set of all the functions which are asymptotically lesser than gn so this is small o of gn this is the set here we have n because n is strictly less than n square we have n log n because n log n is strictly less than n square we have 1 belongs to this set because 1 is less than n square so these are all the functions of small o of gn can we say fn which is equal to n belongs to this set yes n belongs to this set because n is asymptotically lesser than n square and hence we can say fn belongs to small o of gn and therefore f belongs to small o of g this statement is also correct what about f belongs to theta of g we know the big o definition is satisfied but big omega is not satisfied so we can say big theta will also not satisfy because in order to satisfy the theta notation we need to satisfy these two notations but let's try to prove this mathematically as well here we want to show that f belongs to theta of g let's find out whether this is the case or not according to the theta notation theta of gn will be the set of all the functions which are asymptotically equal to gn that's what the theta notation says so theta of gn is this set containing all the functions which are asymptotically equal to n square 2n square is asymptotically equal to n square tan n square is asymptotically equal to n square and there are many such functions which belongs to this set but n does not belongs to this set this means fn does not belongs to this set and hence we can say fn does not belongs to theta of gn therefore f does not belongs to theta of g so this statement is false so with this we found that statement a and statement c are the correct statements statement b and statement d are not i hope you now got how to solve these type of problems so with this we are done with this problem and we are done with this presentation okay friends 
This is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.